Yeah. You've used the term addiction a few times. Uh, mm. There's a good case to uh, to be made that sugar is an addictive food. Do you feel that? What other elements in the standard American diet do you feel are addictive? Do you feel that fat is addictive? Meats are addictive? Yes. Dairy? Yes. Yes me, to all three? And salt, you know, sugar oil. But let me define, but by the way, sugar is not sugar. Sugar is not just sugar. Sugar is white flour. White flour is sugar. It converts into the body into sugar, the same as if you ate a sugar cube. It's just eating sugar. It, the same glucose speed and amount enters the bloodstream. So when you eat white rice, white flour, you know, croissants, bagels, pizza, buns, you know, when you eat that stuff, pasta, you're eating plain sugar. And the nutritarian diet that I recommend, by the way, gets its fat from nuts, seeds, and avocado. The American diet gets its fat from oils and animal fats. There's a complete biological di um, difference, a huge difference here. Animal fats and oils both enter the bloodstream very rapidly, causing a caloric rush of fat. So when you take in bacon or French fries or salad dressing with olive oil on it, you're getting about 40 to 50 calories a minute of fat entering the bloodstream. After that meal, you could have 300 to 400 calories of oil in your blood, of fat in your blood. That high level of caloric rush acts on the brain in the dopamine to make you dopamine insensitive and habituated to a high, high calorie rush into the bloodstream. So you could eat sugar or you can eat apple juice or you could eat honey and you could eat bread and pasta and pizza and get a caloric rush of carbohydrate and glucose in the bloodstream. But it's that combined caloric rush that makes food so addicting. If I served you a salad with with tomatoes and red onion and some you know baby kale, you know baby bok choy and lettuce in there, I put on a nice dressing. Maybe it was a a garlicky tomato sauce with almonds and walnuts in the sauce or something. And then you had a bowl of vegetable bean soup with that, and maybe a couple of nectarines for dessert or something. You'd be satisfied, but you're not going to get a caloric rush from it. Most people wouldn't be satisfied from that. It doesn't hit their brain with enough calories and they're habituated to this caloric rush. They gotta have a chocolate bar. They gotta have an ice cream cone. They gotta have some French fries. They gotta put oil on that meal. They gotta have something greasy or fried with more calories in the bloodstream or they feel they're empty. They don't feel satisfied. They habituated to this need to have a heightened caloric rush. They become calorie consuming. They can't stop wanting some more calories because of the, the substances do not put calories in the blood that fast. So when you eat a bean, or let's say you eat a nut, like a walnut or an almond, you get the fat in your bloodstream or one or two calories a minute comes in. It takes three hours to digest that fat, not three minutes with oil. So the three hours it took to digest the fat from the nuts and seeds means your body is only dealing with two calories, three calories, four calories of fat in the blood, which you can preferentially burn for energy and not store it as fat. But when you put 100 to 200 calories of fat in the blood, you didn't just have to turn on fat storage and stimulate the brain, but it also deactivates insulin receptors and makes you pre makes you um, um, more prone to diabetes. You know, mm -hmm. all overweight people are pre-diabetic because fat on the body makes the insulin receptors not work, which makes you insulin resistant. But I'm saying both fat on the body and fat in the bloodstream both have the effect to magnify insulin resistance. When you eat a nutritarian diet, you get the fat off the body and you get the fat out of the bloodstream even though you're eating fat, you're eating fats that enter the bloodstream so slowly and are not stored as fat. They're burned for energy because they're not entering the bloodstream as quickly because you're eating whole foods as your source of fat. So, so yes, sugar, oil, and salt, SOS, are addicting. And, and they, they're overstimulating. And they make you, and they actually make you desire more calories. And, uh, and when you're off salt too, things taste naturally salty. And you're not, and when you're on a high salt diet, you're excreting a lot of salt in your urine and your sweat. You're always putting out excess salt. And when your sweat is salty, and when your urine is salty, you're losing, you're chronically losing other minerals that are flushed out as the body has to excrete the excessive sodium. So you can't even go run a few miles without getting a cramp in your leg. They gotta be taking water pills or Gatorade or something to replace the electrolytes they're lost. Us nutritarians, 
don't have, can can go to I can you know be outside in the heat all day long climbing a mountain and I'm sweating like a pig. I don't need I just I'm not going to cramp up because my sweat is not salty because I'm not I'm not chronically habituated to a high salt diet. So my kidney and my and my skin doesn't release salt. It holds on to my sodium in my blood.